In the previous video, I used a mesh grid in NumPy to make this Cartesian product of these various lists or various NumPy arrays. And it was a little mysterious though, like why did I have to do this reshape negative one, for example? And so let me show you another way that I think you'll probably like better. And it's using something in what's called the Python standard library. And this is one, one piece of, uh, like one small piece of the Python standard library, and that is the module called iter tools. So from iter tools, I'm just going to import a single function from this. I'm going to import the product function. Okay, and then let me remind myself what this x looks like. Okay, so this is a uh, numpy array from 32 to 59.8. Okay, but why was this numpy array from 13 to 21.8? And this product I can use to create the Cartesian product between x and y. So let me do this. Let me say, and let me save it as g for grid. g equals product xy. Okay, so if you do this without importing product from iter tools, it won't work, and you'll get an error message that says product is not defined. Okay, but here it works. And so what type of thing is this g? And this often happens in Python. It's not some, something you've ever seen before. Instead, it's some specific class of object defined in the iter tools module called product. Okay. But for example, I can turn it into a list. Okay, and here is exactly this Cartesian product that we were looking at before. Okay, perfect. And so, for example, let's try to just look at the last few elements in this. So let me say, G, show me the last five. Oh, and what I meant was list of G, show me the last five. And, and so I, I was getting this, um, this result in a previous recording of this video and was getting very confused. And I don't work with iter tools very often, but I had forgotten that you're only allowed to convert from the like iter tools object into something else. You're only allowed to do that once. And if you're using like a for loop with the iter tools object, you're only allowed to do that once. Otherwise, you have to create it again. So let me create it again. So g2 equals product xy. And now I can say list g2, just show me the last five. Hey, and now it'll work. So that's a little idiosyncrasy of iter tools that you have to get used to. And it's, I mean, why do they do it that way? I think it's because they want to like save, save memory and they don't want these things like staying around, like saved on the computer forever. So I think that is the intuition behind it. So you're only, once you instantiate one of these iter tools objects, you're only supposed to use it once. Okay, so I um, have to make it again. Hey, let's just go back to calling it G. But now I can make a data frame out of this. So PD dot data frame. Hey, G and okay, that's perfect. But I would rather it have column names. Like you're actually not allowed to use something like zero or one as a column name in Altair. So let's try it again. And let's say columns equals, and then let's see, do I still have calls defined from above? I think I do. So uh, let's actually call it calls. And so what happened? Well, I have this same thing again where I can't use the iterator more than once. Okay, but let's get around this and let's do product x, y. Okay, and I could wrap this in a list, but you don't need to. So this will work. Okay, great. And let's save this under the name df sim2. 
Okay, and then if we look at this, okay, with maybe some different rounding errors or maybe in a slightly different order, like the other one, like DF Sim 1, th think it went a little differently. Think it started changing in the X direction first and then later changed in the Y direction. Okay, here it's stable in the X direction first and then changing in the Y direction, but total it's giving me all the same points. Okay, so we'll actually display this grid of points in the next video.